Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Zebu Nation. This is Loser to Legend with Clyde FC. And today we have for you the three quarter season update for season eight in the Ladbrooks Championship. Let's get right to it and see where we're at in the competitions. Well, after 27 games, we're still five wins, nine draws, 24 total points, negative 13 goal differential. It's not great, but it's, you know, I guess a little bit better than where we were. We're no longer in 10th position. We're in ninth position, which is actually significantly better than 10th because 10th is automatic relegation. Ninth, you actually have a little playoff situation going on. So you got the relegation playoffs. You could possibly stay up but where we'd like to get to is up a little bit higher seventh eighth somewhere around there those are sort of the two realistic positions that we're looking at stunhouse muir is only two points ahead of us and livingston is only four points ahead of us so those two teams are reachable definitely definitely within reach so that's going to be some very important games coming up and you know to look at the schedule it's our next two games. <laughs> we got Livingston and then Stenhusmere. So we really need to win, at minimum, draw these two games. We can't fall farther behind these two teams. So coming up, we got some outstanding matchups, and we've really got to focus on those. But for now, let's take a look back at the schedule and see how we got to this position. It's actually been a fairly decent third quarter of the season a lot of times we this is the quarter where we falter but this is actually the quarter where we righted the ship a little bit this season it's pretty good as you can see here our last on camera game was the 2-2 draw with Stenhouse Mirror would have been nice to get a win there but we bounced back after that game with a win against against Wraith a draw versus Inverness and then a very important win versus Ross County I guess we didn't really look at the competitions that much to see where all this uh, shakes out. But as you can see, Ross County is the 10th place team, so we need to beat them and continue to beat them. And Inverness, that draw we got, that's the top team in the league. I mean, that's pretty good when you can get a draw versus them. Then we got Morton, St. Johnston, Patrick Thistle, Wraith, and Dumfernline, sort of, that's the top six, and those are sort of the definitely the much better teams the next level teams for sure so anytime we get a win or a draw versus them it's pretty good so we'll take a look at our schedule back again so again those top teams we hit a little bit of a roadblock here with these two games morton and patrick thistle those two teams again they're at the top of the league but the patrick thistle game i was worried about i thought we were going to get I thought this was going to end our season right here when we lost 5-0 to Patrick Thistle. It was just a brutal day. They got out early, scored two goals in the first half. So the second half, I thought, okay, we're still within shouting reach. Let's try to push things ahead a little bit, and let's see if we can score some goals. But unfortunately, we could not. We were in the diamond formation at the time. And they came and scored three goals in the second half and just put us away. Humiliating home defeat in front of, front of 3,000 fans, which is quite a few fans. But I thought we were done after that. You know, we had to have a team meeting and all this stuff. But then we bounced back 2-1 victory over St. Johnston. And again, one of the top teams in the league. Third place currently. So if we can actually beat a team like that, then there's still hope for the rest of the season. And we've been unbeaten since that point. I mean, it's two draws in the league and one friendly versus Edinburgh University, 5-1. So that was just, you know, sort of a fitness and get everybody feeling good sort of thing with, with scheduling a friendly there. Also, I like playing Edinburgh University. We've got a guy out on loan there, so it's fun, you know, to have our loanies come back and play against us. But anyway... Things are looking up in this quarter of the season. It's been, you know, okay. We got, what, four draws. 
Three wins and two losses. We'll take that. Nine games. Definitely take that. If we do that in the final quarter of the season, that's what? Three, six, nine, thirteen points. I think that that might be good enough for relic for to avoid relegation. That would be thirty seven points. So it might be good enough for eighth place, possibly. I mean we could we could overtake Stenhouse Mirror because we'd have to get a couple of wins against them. That would be nice. Well, one win. We got one win. One game left versus each team. So this is going to be it for all the marbles. We got to beat the teams we're supposed to beat and then hopefully eke out draws versus the top teams and then just pray that we're going to make it. That's all we can do. So let's run down the list and uh, and see what we're up to here. Um, well, I guess we'll look at this first because this is sort of an exciting piece of news. Clyde has a new intake. Why the intake is in the middle of the season, I don't know, but, you know, whatever. Uh, we got every re reason to be excited by Allie Lindsay, who has the potential to be one of the most gifted players to come through the youth ranks in recent years. Um, notable influence in... I think I have had a notable influence in bringing through players such as Tony Leon and George Pettigrew with my coaching style. So who is this? This is Tony McNally. Take a look at him. He's a good judge of potential. He's a good defensive coach. He's a good motivator. He works with youngsters well. You know, mental, technical. Uh, he could be a better technical coach. I think if we had a better technical coach, maybe we'd get better technical youngsters. I don't know if that's how it works. Let's check these guys out and see who we want to sign. Well, we got two guys right away. He is not joking about Ali Lindsay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is he? Four star potential, possibly five star, one and a half star current ability, 13 free kicking. Pretty good. His mental attributes are very good, very aggressive. Good teamwork and vision. Physicals are just sort of okay, but, you know, passable for a central midfielder. You know, he's good. He's a, uh, you know, nine passing for a 16-year-old. He's okay. We'll definitely sign him up. And then we got a goalkeeper, Craig Love, who we definitely need. Eh, handling 14 is good. Reflex is only 10. That's not very good. 12 pace. I mean, he's, he's okay. Hopefully he gets better. That's all we got to do. And then the rest of the group, not that great. Stuart Easton, central defender. Oof. I mean, good jumping reach, I guess. He's six foot four. Good tackling. So he's not the worst guy I've ever seen. Craig McCormick, a striker. Sort of an all around guy. 5'11, a poacher without good acceleration. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I like this guy. This guy could maybe be a winger or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, another right fullback here, Craig McGuire. Decent physicals. Okay, mentals, I guess. He's got good teamwork anyway. Not good technicals at all. That's probably the last guy on the list we would look at. I don't think we'd even look at any of these other guys. No. Hornby, no. Pettigrew. Uh, we could use some right wingers, so maybe we'll sign him just, just for depth. We take a look at the under 20, see where we're at in terms of right wingers. We got one guy who's no good. Two guys who are no good. Oh, we got one guy who's good. Scott McKay. One and a half star. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, left wingers were also sort of a dearth of left wingers. But anyway, I guess that's why we get so many defensive players, because he's a defensive coach. But anyway, we definitely want to sign a few of these guys, and we'll get to that eventually. Um, finances. Finances are still on the borderline. We got an overall positive balance of 20000 Making a profit this month. Making a profit on the season so far. So that's good. You can see we're just 
right up here we're going back and forth between above red and below red so we gotta uh, you know figure that out but I don't know that it's gonna get any better until the end of the season when we can shed some more salary and stuff like that board wise we're very secure the board is happy with us they just want us to fight against relegation and so far we're doing that no problems there um, our new Owner Logan Kelly is enjoying his time at the club. That's good. Anything going on with board confidence? They love our finances. They love the leadership support. And that's about it. They don't love anything else. Let's see. Club-wise, still one and a half star reputation. Jordan Sinclair is now a favored personnel. Zebu Nation is not, unfortunately. Got him. I mean, come on, people. Stop being so stingy with your love. Love me. Come on. What's going on? All right. Facilities, we're still, you know, what we are. Adequate, basic, below average youth facilities. Just don't have the money to do anything about this, so there's not much we can do. Transfers, we got one signee coming in, but he's not coming in until June. So that's, you know, next year. So basically, this is a signing for next year. Declan Glass, 24-year-old advanced advanced playmaker. But he can play out on the wings a little bit, too. Good crossing, good dribbling. Um, not the greatest physicals in the world, but very good mental. 16 vision, 12 passing. He can be a real playmaker for us wherever we put him. Got him on a free from Queens Park. When his contract runs out, we're going to pick him up. Um, four pros, four cons. Ability to spot the pass and create chances. That's good. He's a four-star player with five-star potential. He is only 24 years old. I mean, 24 years old is a little, a little bit on the edge of whether he'll ever improve or not. But the fact that he's got that potential is definitely what we're looking for. Okay, sorry about that. Had to pause for a minute, but we're back. Let's get out of here. So that was our one transfer. We, nothing else really happened in the transfer. You know, we brought in those loans that we've had all year, so we haven't messed anything. We haven't sent anybody out on loan. Haven't done anything. So that's no no problems there. Medical center. We're not too bad. Gary McCauley is out. Our young striker 20 years old so that's a bit of a blow but we're getting by without him we've got several players who can uh, who can play striker and Tony Ozzy just picked up a little bit of an injury last week so he'll be returning to fitness soon but not enough to play in today's game but soon got a few nagging injuries guys coming back Davies had a pulled hamstring he's been out for a while it's been sort of nagging on him all season he's not fit so he's not playing. I don't know how much he's going to play the rest of the year, but we'll see. As for the rest of the guys, I, we're pretty much okay. There's the two guys we talked about, Antoniazzi and Davies. Everybody else is just sort of average or below average. So that's fine. Um, dynamics. We're currently at a strong point. Our dynamics are going up and down with our winning and losing streaks, and that's to be expected a little bit. But for the most part, we've stayed strong. Very good match cohesion, good locker room support, um, good leadership support. We have one concerned player, Ryan Potter, but that's fine. He's not that important of a player. Hierarchy's looking good. Maxwell and Davies are up top as the team leaders. Critchley, Sinclair, Glover, Leach are the highly influential players. And uh, you know, nobody who opposes us, just about everybody who's anybody supports us, so that's good. Social groups, mostly one big sports social group. A couple of our new guys in the others group, but that's fine. Happiness, mostly happy. Leech is only slightly happy. You know, a few guys are only slightly happy. You know, because they'd rather be winning and stuff. But for now, we're okay. We don't need any team meetings. I guess we're okay. So that's the three-quarter point of the season. Got some very important games coming up on the schedule including the game today with Livingston so let's let's start moving on and getting to that game have our youth intake game in a couple of days after that as well so that'll be good to get a get a look at all those recruits 
And we're going to go with the 4-1-2-3 DM wide. Now we look back at the schedule, and the last two games we played against them, we lost playing the Diamond Formation, and we won playing the Burning Man Formation. So we're going to go with the Burning Man Formation. No, we didn't win using the Burning Man Formation. We drew using the Burning Man Formation. So we're going to go with that again, as that seems to be our most successful. And if that doesn't work, if we get behind or something like that, we can still switch formations. But you know, for now, we're going to go with what should be our best formation and has been our best formation over the course of these last few games. So let's hand that over to the assistant coach. Let's go. You know, we've had to go defensive. We're mostly using the counterattack, trying to grind out wins, just stay sound defensively and, you know, catch him on the counterattack with one or two shots, maybe get some set piece goals here and there and just manufacture whatever goals we can. Diver wants to talk about leaving. Let's see if Critchley can resolve that. Yes, he does. Okay. It's not as 100% as it is on some teams with these guys. But it does still work pretty good when you ask the captains to intervene. Now, if he comes back again like next month, it probably won't work. But for now, that, I think that's the first time he's complained because he has been playing somewhat this season, but not a lot. Anyway, let's get to the match with Livingston. We are the favorites, I guess. Maybe. I don't know how to read this. Four to seven, seven to four odd favorites. It, it seems like four to one would be better odds than four to seven. But anyway, their seventh position. We're coming in in fair form right now. One win, two draws, and two losses in our last five. They're inconsistent. Three losses, one win, one draw in their last five. Last time out, Livingston has won three of the last four, and we've only had the one draw, so we'll see. They're going with the basic 4-4-2. they got a couple of injuries. They're a good tackling squad, but they don't score a lot of goals. Dead last in the league in goals with only 19, so that's good. Playing at home, I believe that's what that said, right? Cumbernaut Stadium, yep, at home. So hopefully we can get a little bit of fan support. That would be nice. So this is uh, what we're going with. It's been a while since I've played with this team because, you know, I went on vacation and then I started playing with the Montreal Impact a lot. Then the new game Battletech came out. Started playing that last weekend. I bought a new car, so that sort of messed up my schedule a little bit. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. But anyway, on the bench, we're going with Diver, that man who just complained. Lockheed, Rowan, Zata, Gray, Lindsay, and Manson as the reserves. So let's submit that team. Milne is latch lacking match sharpness and needs a number. We're going to give him... He's our best defensive fullback, so we're going to give him a shot here. Um, I guess we'll give him Sean Dowie's number. I don't know how often Dowie's going to play our third string goalkeeper. But here we go. Yes, they are going with the 4-4-2. They've got their own Finlayson. D. Finlayson is their captain at right central defense. McDonough appears to be their all-everything. Most assists, 6 assists, 6.92 rating. Their highest rated player and their top goal scorer, I guess, are not in the game. I guess. Anyway. We're going with Wilson in goal, Milne and Finlayson at the fullbacks, Gorman and Mitchell at the central defense. Mitchell has been playing very well. Hartford, Maxwell, and Sinclair in the midfield, a very defensive midfield. I mean, I guess Maxwell is a pretty good offensive player, but Sinclair and Hartford in at the same time makes this a pretty defensive uh, group. we got Leach on the left-hand side. He is our most assists. He also has six assists, 6.7 rating on the season in 13 starts. Critchley is going to be on the right. He can move up to striker if necessary. And Duffy Arloni, who's been playing very well, is up at striker. So it's a bit of a different lineup. But we just had a game two days ago, and the team is still kind of worn out from that. So anyway. Um, uh, let's see. I know many of you are anxious to avenge what happened last time. There we go. 
Got to go with that one. I didn't want to get too cocky and say we should be winning this. I don't know if we want to put that kind of pressure on the boys. Assistant coach doesn't have much to say. So let's close down on the strikers. On the wingers, it looks like the wingers are getting forward a little bit. Definitely on McDonough, who's their leading assist man. No, not never, always. Doesn't look like the fullbacks are coming forward just yet. So this is good. Let's go. Kick off. It's a decent crowd here. Yeah, I guess so. Cumbernaud Stadium. Can't see uh, the near side of the pitch, but usually there's some decent fans on both sides of the pitch. The end, end caps are usually not very full. But anyway, here's Leach trying to get it forward. Oh, Duffy had a man breaking forward. Critchley was breaking forward, and nobody got him the ball. Ouch. There's a brutal foul in midfield. Graham, get out of here. What are you doing? Don't touch the ball. Don't touch my ball. Maxwell. Uh, Maxwell. Nothing came from that. What's what's his... Uh, oh, here we go. Leach with a free kick. He sends one back post. Gorman is there with the header. That was a good play. We were just... We had a whole stack of players on that side. I wish I had designed that. that I should uh, do that more often. All right, so I guess we got the first highlight, two highlights, I suppose, two, two um, specialty plays, and those are the sort of goals that we've had to score recently. So if we can get more of those, that's fine. I'm happy with that. All right, goalkeeper's looking confident, I suppose. Maxwell also looking motivated. Motivated, there we go. It's always good to see your best player and your goalkeeper looking motivated. How are we looking highlights-wise? Extendo highlights, all right. They're, they're already piling up the yellow cards. Here's another throw in. Finlayson gets it right back to Hartford. Maxwell, what's he going to do? Drop it to Duffy who takes a shot. Not much of a shot, but he took a shot, I guess. The rain is now coming down. Here we get one forward. Can't get it to Duffy. Is Livingston going to get their first highlight? They look like they're slow playing it. That was a really lazy pass. Now they're blasting it forward. Mackin. No, Gorman. What are you doing? They have trouble scoring goals. You can't give them free goals. Penalty kick. Let's see. Let's see. Here's Graham. Oh, good stop by Wilson, but he nobody gets the rebound. Brutal. That's a brutal way to go down. So now I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. You know, when we go down early, our counterattack doesn't really work. But we'll stick with it through the half. That was a great finish the second time around. Great stop the first time. Here we go. Here's Graham on the free kick. Wrighton. He's going to center it for... Hmm. Buchan. Oh, Finlayson with a brutal tackle. Buchan. 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 I don't know. Finlayson steals it from whoever that was. Let's go, boys. Come on. Let's be a little better than that. Get that steal. Finlayson. There we go. Critchley's getting it forward. Duffy on the run. The advance forward. One th oh, my Lord. What was that? Duffy. The Duff man. Dominic Duffy. When you got 13 finishing, 11 composure, you should be better than that. Come on now. All right, let's get another steal. Here's Craig in the midfield. They like those long passes out to the wings. Hopefully our fullbacks can steal more of those. Good play. Maxwell settles it down to Sinclair. He's going to bang it forward for Duffy again behind the defense. One touch this time. This time he plays it cool. There we go. Counterattack. It did work. They didn't lay off things. It looks like they're in sort of a... Sort of a control system. I mean, look how high up they're playing. 
And then, oh, yep, their fullback kept Duffy on side. That was just bad discipline on his part. There we go. Tie it up. No need to worry. You know, they got a lucky goal. Hopefully that's all they can muster. Let's get a 2-1 victory. That would be outstanding. They're getting all kind of yellow cards. Stewart with the goal kick for Livingston. Sends it downfield. McDonough settles it down. He's going past Milne. Gonna have to keep an eye on Milne. Because if he's not playing well, we can we can sub him out for sure. Oh, what a pass down to Duffy. They seem to have a little bit of a problem at the moment. Marking Duffy. They're losing him all over the field. Getting shots on goal, but they're coming from too far out. I can appreciate that. We'll try working the ball in the box, I guess. I mean, either bomb it forward or work it in the box. Either way, McDonough, Sinclair sends it back out, but McDonough centers it. Oof, good stop by Wilson. That was kind of a tricky shot. So here we go. Livingston gets another crack at it. This time Sinclair boots it way out long. That was a much better clearance. Clarence Forrester not going to mess up. That would be nice if he could have messed that up. But here we go. Throw in Longridge. Right, or, yeah, Whiten? Anyway. Buchan sends it in. Maxwell heads it out. Duffy can't get to it. Craig has it. Chips it into the box to Macklin. Mackin. Sorry. Not used to these names. I haven't played them in a while. So Whiten and Mackin are their strikers. Keep an eye on them. How's everybody doing ratings wide? Everybody's doing fine. Duffy with an 8.1 and a goal. Sinclair 6.8 and an assist. Defense sort of woof, getting worse by the minute. Don't like that. But we're just about up to halftime. See if we can make it to halftime 1-1 one, one, and then figure something out in the second half. Maybe a good... Nice motivating speech. We'll get the boys operating. Here's Maxwell in the final minute. Oh, he gets brutalized again. Get out of here. Red card. Red card for Graham. There we go. See you later. Down to 10 men. This could help our chances significantly in the second half. All right, what's our analysis look like for half? Analysis. Um, getting shots too far, we should encourage our players to play more direct passing. Huh. Okay. I don't know if that still holds. Now we've been, uh, you know, working the ball pretty good down the middle of the field. And they've been just scattershot all over the place. So we'll see. I kind of feel like maybe we should take control a little bit. Now that they're down to 10 men, right? I think that's that's good strategy. Um, they're down a man, so let's get a result here. Who switched off? Critchley, why did you switch off? Critchley. Assertive. Um, there's much more to come from you. Get out of here. All right. That's what I want to see now. Pep talk is over. Let's start the second half. And let's try retaining possession. See if that works at all. Milne to Leach. Let's see what Leach is going to do. Nada. All right, that's fine. That's fine. 48. 49. Let's go. Oh, boy. Whiten with a free kick. Ooh, Wilson is on point today. I mean, he saved that penalty, even though they got the rebound. He's made some big stops today. They've had a few chances, and a lot of their chances have been dangerous, and Wilson has been right there. So he's the man keeping us in the game right now. Second best rating on the team at a 6.9. 
55, 56. All right, at 60 minutes. Probably change to the opposite tactic and start booting the ball. So we'll go more direct passing, maybe. Maybe not. Here's Hartford to Maxwell. Sinclair. Looking around. Finlayson gets it on the near side. He sends it forward to Critchley. Critchley. I thought he was going to go around those guys, but I guess not. Maxwell. Duffy's got... Oh, I thought he was going to give it to Leach, but no. We are just definitely being patient here. Here's Sinclair. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so I think if we go patient, we can definitely wind out the clock, but we'll see. Oh, they've got a... Oh, that's a red card. They got two of their substitutes down. Maxwell. Here we go. Duffy was in the box, but he didn't quite receive that pass. Maxwell, I'm feeling good about this highlight. This could be a good highlight. Hartford forward to Critchley. Critchley on the run. He centers it. Leach back post. He completely missed. He loves scoring goals like that. I can't believe he completely missed. Off the outside of the post. That's no good. You got to at least make the keeper make a save. All right, Mitchell got his first yellow card of the season, 6.4 rating. Milne not playing particularly well. We bring in Scott Gray, I think. Have him play fullback and get a little bit forward in the support role. Because Gray, you know, he's got some decent offensive abilities. 15 corners, 12 crossing, 14 free kick taking. So at the very least, he can come in and win some of those specialty plays. And then uh, we got a problem here with Maxwell. He's looking tired. He is motivated, though. 6.9 rating. I guess we'll leave him in for a little bit longer, see if he can do anything. Improved himself to a 7-0 rating. Finlayson is out for them. They've made their third substitution. Jamie Craig gets another yellow card. Oh, Mackin is injured. All right, all right, all right. So they're down now. They're, they're down to nine men. Let's do some tactics. Hashtag tactics. Do we dare? Do we dare? Change formation. <sighs> you know, we could go to the diamond. Duffy's false nine. Critchley can play poacher. Can move Maxwell up to advanced playmaker. Um, bring in, uh, I think Zata's a better midfielder. Yeah, you can play Mazala. Get out wide. Um, uh, well, I don't know. No. We've already got Sinclair going out wide. So we'll keep you at central midfield attack. Gray's a fullback on attack. Uh, Finlayson, let's, let's, I mean, I guess attack. Do we want to attack them? Control the ball. Retain possession. I mean, let's see, right? We, we should have the advantage. They're down two men. So let's go. And let's hit play. Change thing up. Change formations. Can they deal with it? Apparently they can. Here we go. Finlayson throw in near side. Gets it to Maxwell. 
Crowd is building in anticipation. Finlayson wide open down the wing. Hartford doesn't get it to him. Instead, they're going to try to hit us on the counterattack, but Mitchell is there to Gorman. Out wide to Gray. Gray to Sinclair is going to take it wide. No, nope, he takes it, ducks it back in. Finlayson, what are you doing there, my man? You should be out wider. Gray. Oof. What is happening? Let's get wider. 85 minutes. Duffy heads it in. Cameron heads it back out. Gray picks it up. Gray looking, looking to Hartford. Sinclair. Zata gets tackled. All right, our defense is back, so that's good. Finlayson on the wrong side of the field. Maxwell. Come on, boys. Let's get in position a little bit. Duffy has it, the false nine. He's playing that position now. Finlayson again getting inside. I don't like that. I'd prefer some width. Duffy going to go in a corner out of it. Our guys look so discombobulated offensively. We're just, just a pack of beasts running around. It's like watching you know, grade school soccer matches where just the kids follow the ball in one giant pack. Duffy. Ugh. Ugh. Got nothing else to say but yuck. 89 minutes. I mean, let's see if we can go on attack for the last. Got to get a win here. It's at home. We got five minutes of stoppage time. Let's go and get a win. Come on, this would be a huge start to the second or the fourth quarter. Two minutes down. Three minutes down. Four. We got 45 seconds left. Goal kick. This is probably the last highlight. Gray has it. Let's see if we can work the ball downfield. Gonna bomb it to nobody. Bell. 30 seconds to go. McLean just sort of lifts it. Whiten. Tries to send it out wide. Gray's there to Zata. Here we go. Starts at Critchley. Critchley getting forward. He's moving down the left-hand side. He's got Duffy in the middle. He's triple covered. Finlayson picks it up. 10 seconds to go. Out wide. Sends it into Duffy. Duffy tried to cross it, was unable to do it, and Craig is going to run out the clock. Well, boys, we tried. Didn't really, you know, we sat back for a lot of the game. But again, it's that thing where the other team goes down to nine. This is at least three games now that I've played in different, different saves where the other team goes down to nine men and I can't do anything against them. I can't score against them at all. So I, I'd almost prefer that they stayed at 11 or even had 12. I don't know. It might make them overconfident. But anyway. Defense played not too well. Gorman got a little better in the second half. Scott Gray came in and played well. Um, Hartford played well in the second half. Duffy also got the man of the match. Very consistent, 8.2 in the first half, 8.3 in the second half. Critchley greatly improved himself by going to striker. He is a much more comfortable at striker than winger. But still, draw is okay. You are not good enough. Get out of here, confidence losers. Um, draw is not good enough to get us out of the basement. Got us one point closer. Stenhouse Muir, but didn't get us any closer to Livingston. I guess it got us one point away from Ross County, so that's fine, I guess, but not good enough. Not good enough. Duffy shines as even as Clyde failed to win, I guess so. Fusco. The Fusco brothers are spotted at Brentwood Stadium. Get out of here. May well be checking on the progress of his lo young lone star, Liam Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, he's playing well, but he's not looking good. He's dropping. His his stats, are, his attributes are dropping. 
So maybe they should recall him from loan. I don't know. I might if I was them, but whatever. He's getting game time. He's got eight. Well, he's got eight appearances. That's not really a lot, but uh, anyway. We'll take a look at our youth candidate game and all that stuff. Try to put on a winning streak of some sort and get out of the cellar. If we can just, you know, with uh, Scott Smith. Who are you? Left midfielder, I guess. He's getting better, so that's fine. Anyway, uh, we'll sign those youngsters to some youth contracts, and then we'll come back for the fourth quarter of the season, and hopefully we'll have some good news. Hopefully we'll stay up and not, uh, not get relegated. Or maybe we'll have some relegation playoffs for you. Either way, whatever happens, we'll be back uh, next time. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. There's a team they call the Clyde Who will fill your heart with pride Dressed up in the red and black We an L sign on the back They've a winger and a keeper And a great big carpet sweeper It's the